I want to go over today the four big equations for electrostatics and how they're going to be used. So the first of these equations we've already seen and that is for force between two charges. We found that the force between charges is equal to Coulomb's constant times each charge divided by the distance between the charges squared. So when I have two charges they exert a force on each other and Coulomb's law lets me figure out how much force that's going to be. We can then have uh, that force along with the mass of the object predict the acceleration of the object. So when I let go of either of these charges this force is going to pull these charges together and this equation will let us know how much acceleration they're going to have when they start moving. We can also find the energy stored between these two charges. So as I try to push these two objects together they're going to try and push each other apart. So this formula tells me how much energy is stored between these charges. Think of it like a spring that you're compressing. The spring is trying to push back out again. These charges are also trying to push apart. You've felt this if you ever tried to push two norths of a magnet together. You feel how they repel each other. Well that repulsion is actually stored energy. Okay, so we can use that along with the kinetic energy equation to find the speed of these objects when they're very far apart because that potential stored energy will turn into kinetic energy. Just remember that each moving particle will get some of that kinetic, some of that original potential energy. We can also use this equation or this idea to figure out how much work was done to bring these objects to this location. When these objects are very far apart there's almost no stored energy. So when we calculate the potential energy at a given spot that tells us how much work it took to get these objects from a very far distance to this point. Another idea that we have is the idea of an electric field and you only need one charge for an electric field. So when I have a single charge surrounding it is going to be an electric field. We can uh, notice the size of the electric field depends on distance. So the farther I am away, the smaller the electric field, and as I get closer, the electric field gets larger really rapidly. The formula to figure out electric field is much like the formula for force, except it involves just one charge. So if I want to know the electric field where this x is, we do Coulomb's constant times the charge divided by the distance squared. Notice the electric field points away from positive charges and if I put a negative charge in that same location it would point toward the negative. The math formula is the same, the direction is different. Okay, we can use electric field to find force. So I already showed you one way of finding force. You can also find the force by finding the electric field at the spot marked with the x and then using this equation where Q nu is a charge that is placed at that x. In addition to electric field we can also find the voltage from a single charge. So this um, little meter here shows me how much voltage I'm experiencing at different locations and you can see the farther away I get the less voltage that is there. If I plot an equal potential surface it will show me all the places where the voltage was 11.4 volts or all the places where the voltage is 22.3 volts. Okay, the voltage again is a measure of energy per charge. So the use of this is that we can find out how much work it would take to put a charge at a certain location if we know the voltage at that location. So we take the voltage at that location, the charge that we're going to place at that location, and we can find out how much energy is required to get the charge to that spot. This is a quick overview of the four most important equations for electrostatics.